Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio, presented by Celebs.com, up here at TIFF. Sat Sutherland, CC Pounder, Tatiana Ali. Um, firstly, congratulations on being back, Sats. I mean, 2003, you had your best fe first feature award up at TIFF. Of course, you've been involved since then, but this is really your first kind of feature back. So how does that feel for you? Is it like a homecoming of sorts? Yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of like a homecoming. I mean, I used to volunteer here. Used to be one of the volunteers opening doors for celebs and 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 helping people out and and you know, back in the day people were like you know elderly women would say are you one of those young hot black filmmakers and I, I was like well one day I will and now now I am yes Do I am ask now. You that, have you have anyone asked you that question? Um, no. <laughs> 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 like. Like, excuse me, is Brad Pitt here? Where is that? The, that's really the kind of thing. Is, get out of my way. That's, I think that's, that's Joseph Gordon-Levitt over there. Now that you're all famous, you don't open doors for old women anymore? Is that what you No, saying? I always open doors for old women. <laughs> so, so this film, obviously, you know, taking three people out of their element and putting them in somewhere that's completely foreign to them, despite the fact that technically... Oh, oh the director. Sorry. Despite the fact that... Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, Jennifer. It's, it's time to, it's, we're at go time. Okay, I'll call you back. <laughs> it was good. So, Suts, was that the, the other half of the creative equation? It was. Did she want to weigh in on the conversation? No, no, she doesn't like doing these interviews, I'm telling you. It's just, I, I try to get her here, and she doesn't like me doing the interview. She, she, she likes writing, and she, I thought she wrote a fantastic script. I helped out a bit, but she wrote a fantastic script. And she, uh, you know, produced this whole thing and made this whole thing happen. So it's uh, she's like all testament due to Jennifer Holmes. Is it easier to work with your wife on that sort of thing, or is it something that means you can't get away from work even when you're at home? Are you crazy? I mean, <laughs> no, it's 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 hard working with your spouse, and she will attest that she will attest. Um, but it's also great because I think we complement each other. And all kidding aside, I think we, we complement each other. Uh, we both have strengths. And we build upon those strengths, and where we're weak, we build upon that. We try to complete each other, um, because I think that we're a good team, bringing a male and female energy to anything that we do. And here you're focusing on, you know, quite a few strong women characters as well, or lost women as well. But CC, I mean, what was your first meeting like with Studs? What made you want to do this with him? Here it was kind of a, a convenient accident that kind of had you involved in the project. I think convenient accident is a really good <laughs> phrase for this because I, I mean I'm not sure how they came to me in terms of why call but once we got together in the room I knew I wanted to do it because it had the three criteria that I wanted it was um, an independent film in a region that I wanted to assist it had the writing that I could actually say okay I'll go ahead and do it and the bottom line is you've got to have a story and it's got that. And so, so you know, tell me about Dulce, like, like what was it about her that, that made this kind of interesting? You know what's really ironic about Dulce is that I didn't connect to the character specifically but I connected to the overall story and my contribution originally I thought okay it's because I've got a name and therefore I'm in the story but once I got to read the story um, there's so many things that I could relate to or remember within my own immigrant life that I had things in my pocket that were useful right away I remember my mother leaving I remember being shipped off to a boarding school I re remember leaving the country in a hurry very quickly not in the dead of night but in an afternoon of an, going to an unexpected place and then finding myself um, from 90 degrees to October in the United States looking at row houses that all looked exactly the same and I have had extraordinary memories that I could put to use in this film. That was from Guyana. Right. So, so you mentioned a second ago that it was an area you wanted to help. What did you specifically mean by that? Um, the Caribbean is not a place for a great deal of films uh, that people can see. Um, they make a small amount of films, but I think it's got a history of great oral storytelling, fantastic stories that 
could be shared with the rest of the world, and it's uh, an unplowed field. And this is one of the great uh, stories to come out of there. I assisted in a film in the Bahamas, one in Guadeloupe, so I am going through the countries, providing that they've got good the story. Islands. And that too. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I've spent a great deal of my life at fantastic locations like the swamps of Valdosta. So, <laughs> on the main road in Trinidad, I think I'll do okay, yeah. Tatiana, you took, uh, like Cece just called it an unplowed field, that like tri uh, Trinidad, Jamaica, um, was it more difficult to shoot there given that perhaps they don't have as much production as other places? I thought it was amazing. Actually, shooting in Trinidad was one of the, the pieces when I, when I look back at this experience that I just loved. My father is from Trinidad. He came to the United States when he was 18, 19. And so, in many ways for me, it was like going home and getting to experience his homeland for myself, having my own experiences about it. Um, but I, I love school <laughs> and I love education. And there were so many, like, like CCH said, the, the, the uh, uh, film is, is new there. This was like a, a big, a really big project to come to the island. And so beneath every key and in every department, there were Trinidadians, incredibly talented people learning the trade of filmmaking. And that was just the most beautiful thing to watch. It really was. When you worked with Rodrigo Garcia, obviously that film, Mother and Child, it's all in the title. Mm. You know, um, here you've got a, a situation that could be defined the same way, mother and, or mother without child, rather, or mother without children. So for you, like, do you have kids? I don't have kids, and that was, that was, um, that was the, the big challenge for me, even, uh, approaching the script and approaching the story. At first I said, well, what does Marva do? Okay, she's a nursing citizen. What does she do? What does she do? What does she do? And then it finally hit me like a ton of bricks. She's a mother. <laughs> that is the most important part of her life. And so um, I had a lot of fun um, building that in myself as much as I could. And I took from my, I'm blessed to have a really wonderful mother and grandmother, so I took a lot from them. Um, but yeah, what it's like to, I feel like for Marva, her children are, are like, limbs and it's like she's without parts of her body um, and so that was I that's something that I've taken away from the film I, I I felt a little bit of what it's like to be a mom I wouldn't say completely mm -hmm. but I, yeah a I think bit. that when when people you know when people watch movies they try and read stuff into it all the time and like Marva is like so close to being a mother that she's like I mean literally the word is so close to being mother but yeah. it's slightly incomplete mm -hmm. you know so so it's that sort of aspect of it. Is the naming of these characters, is that something you take a lot of time with? Yeah, we do. We, we take it like, it's a very method, method there's a methodology to it, um, because each of the names have to be different and start with different consonants. And then from there, we go and we, you know, really try to figure out what does this one mean? And how common does this appear in our, in, in these, in whatever region it is? Um, so we actually do go through a long, like, because it was like, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. Because at one point it was um, Maryland, one, Monica. There's a bunch of different mm -hmm. things that we're going through. And that's, uh, but when we name characters, it's, um, it's huge. Because and it's like sometimes like a character, it just doesn't fit. It's just not right. It doesn't, there's a rhythm. It doesn't have the meaning. So that, oh, it's, it's intensive. But it, again, this process, this film, this writing process was, uh, well, it's been a six-year process because I think the final draft is the film. And so what was it about Tatiana that you saw that you knew you wanted her to play this part too? I think it is like, there's a very kind of an innocent quality to Tatiana, even though she's a fully grown woman and all that. But it's like there's still an innocence there. And also like just because like of being caught up in, in whatever crime she was caught up in, it's a crime of naivete. And that was, that was the one thing, uh, being a mule. Is, is there's a naivete to that decision, like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can mule these. Uh, I can be. I can just take the suitcase up, and it'll be fine. Because so many young women are caught up into that, and so we wanted to sort of look at that crime, um, because again, it, it's like you're just taking up a suitcase, and it's like a, it should be an easy peasy thing, but so many people get caught up in that, and so we wanted to look at that as what goes into it. And I think that one of her strongest scenes 
is this monologue that she delivers, and she just describes how it all happened. And I thought that it's one of one of the best uh, scenes in the film as she goes and and breaks down and describes the whole crime. And the whole audience has been waiting for this because they don't they don't know why she's in Jamaica, they don't know why she's been deported. Um, but I think that that is part of the quality of it. There's a there's a girl next door quality to it uh, to, that that she has and an innocence, and then but that also like that that like I know her. I know her, not just because of her obvious fame, but just because like there's a, a feeling that you could say, and I think it's called cousining. Like when you go and like immediately when you go to your cousin's house, it's like they'll all the photographs, they catch up with you. Oh, this is when you were six, and this is when you're this, and, and you see these photographs, you've never seen them before in your life. But all of a sudden, like there's a feeling there. It's like a cord between you, and it's I call it cousining. And it's like that kind of feeling. That's that's the reason why she's at the park. I saw it happen to Cece when she walked in, because you know wherever she goes, people refer to her from different projects that she's done. So there's a familiarity, but it's from different periods in her life. Yeah. Why didn't you shoot the whole film in Jamaica? It was it was financially a challenge. I mean, this is a a, a modestly budgeted production, and to get this film to Jamaica, um, we needed we needed some kind of assistance. We needed to complete the budget. There was a hole in the budget, so we went through various various scenarios. And we needed some movement. Like I mean, just I don't want to like do all inside baseball, but we just needed to close that gap. And so Trinidad had a tax incentive, and w that that enabled us to close the gap. Very cool. Well, congratulations on getting it done and for being here, and and thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Thank you very much, Alex. Cheers.